What's up, people of the world? Internet freaks and fanatics. We're back. <laughs> Ty Lasseter, Pat Hilton, we're giving away an iPad today. You know, it's crazy. I post a lot of stuff on the internet and have for a long time. And it's like the songs that I write about a guy with a refrigerator on his back get 50,000 <laughs> views. I try to give somebody an iPad, we get like 13, 15 contestants. Right. It's I, crazy. It is. It is. But hey, it is what it is. So we somebody's, somebody's going to get an iPad. We have a today. winner coming, guys. We've we have got a winner, winner coming, coming here in just a minute. And we've got some pretty cool announcements. We had a uh, we do. We had pretty a, wild day. An eventful day yesterday. Super excited about it. And it's Crazy. all because we've been building relationships. And Absolutely. We, we focus on those relationships Absolutely. and communicating. To the point where we're using the crazy autofocus webcam today because I don't have the little cable. We didn't make it back until 2 o'clock in the morning last night. We got back or this after morning 1 o'clock and whatever. almost 2 o'clock What, what this day morning. is it? We, we were up at 5 a.m. yesterday and didn't get back until almost 2 o'clock. That's wildness. That is. Here's the intro, you guys, and then we're going uh, to draw a lucky winner for the iPad and uh, all that jazz coming at you. Cash, cash, coming in fast. Relative info on investments that will smash. Miss out on this, you'll be coming in last. Acoustic force, bringing the intro blast. Hey, this is Vanilla Ice, and I'm chilling with my man, Ty Lassiter. And I want to tell you one command. Stop, collaborate, and listen. Key City Capital is about to throw down. So get it how you live it, and always remember, cash, cash, baby. <laughs> Bet. I have had a number of sellers that have told us that we got the deal because we touched their their property, we touched them, we had marketing to them, we were in front of them more often than our competition was. All right, folks, we're back, we're live, and uh, man, like I said, it's been been pretty wild around here. Yeah. We've got a lot of people jumping on. That want to do media and stuff with us we got a bunch of people jumping on that need um other different services i mean you guys run multiple business obviously the main thing is the real estate yeah but like there's That's a lot of different things foundation but there's so many other things that play into that and yeah like you said there's a number of people that have been requesting media and um kind of building out their own podcast and things like that in the last couple of weeks and so we're working on those things. Um, had a big day yesterday with, I mean, basically communications and relationships. And um, we went down, you know, to San Antonio yesterday and um, met up with Quentin Flores, who I only knew via online and Facebook and social media. Um, you've actually met him before and talked to him and stuff, but we've been talking back and forth about doing some stuff together. And it's just been a relationship that we've continued to kind of build slowly over um, a short period of time and knew that it was super important. And that was a relationship that we wanted to, to, to strengthen and to grow. And so um, planned a short spur of the moment trip down to San Antonio yesterday and to, to see how we could work together. And um, I mean, it's phenomenal after meeting him and talking to him, just the, the people that you meet, if, if you, if you close off opportunities, you close off bridges or, um, you, you burn bridges, like you lose out on opportunities and people that are successful in their own niche or successful, maybe they're successful in real estate, but they're doing something a little bit different than, than you are. You know, both, both of us stand to gain, um, a ton of insight and opportunity between each other. Um, he's had, he had a very successful event that he did a couple of months ago and was looking to bring some avenues and, and a special guest, uh, that um that will be announcing soon for his for his next event and and wants us to be there so there's content that we can provide his following um and opportunities that we can provide his following because we took the time to collaborate and see how we could work together right and then another you know on our way home derek his buddy from houston yeah. who uh, i'm really great at creating content, but there's two parts. We talked about this a lot over the last two weeks. There's yeah. two parts to content. You got to focus on getting the content creation and having something for people to see. Then you've got to drive traffic, right? It's like Ross, the Russell Brunson funnel, all of that. These guys teach all this stuff. How do we get more eyes on the traffic? And that's, that's just like, that's exactly right. A whole another part of the game. And so we want to make sure that we're working with people that are 
better than us in certain areas. We got to pass the puck to score. Right. And so, you know, that's another relationship that we're building now that is with is, Derek in Houston, who's a, who's just a, just a G with that. And that comes into, you know, implementation. We get a good idea. And real quick, guys, I have a fresh, clean cup today. Does not have any beverage, water, or vitamin water that I typically drink. It has the names of the people we will draw at the end of today's show. So just wanted to let you guys know real quick, there is... If you can see them down in there, they're that in is there. Not liquid. That is paper. That is and you guys, um, somebody's name that needs to be watching. Actually, have the a end really good chance of win because yeah, I I'm think I mean, we you. had like seventeen entries or something like that. So right, yeah, somebody's going to get a get a good opportunity. But yeah, so back to that. So you know, we went down there. We had we had one specific meeting lined up. That specific meeting ended up having um, Quentin introduced us to. Um, three and possibly a fourth opportunity that is really ways that, that we can work together, utilize kind of a network that he has um, and and that is doing some very specific things that could be helpful in our business as well. Um, and, and one of those relationships is somebody that I've kind of tried to build a relationship with a different person that would do the same thing. And um, it was something that I was going to have to build out from the ground floor up. Well, Quentin has already gone in and kind of trained a VA on what it is that he wanted done. And it's going to be an opportunity that we can come in and um, work together, utilize um, our own content and hand our own content over to that VA and allow them to work with the, the same types of data that they've been using in the past and to do a little bit something different, put our own twist on that. And so we kind of talked to Quentin about that yesterday is like, you know, I, and I talk about all the time, um, R and D, um, you know, utilize what somebody else in, in your industry or another industry is doing, but then come in and how can you make that personalized to you? How can this, how can this work in your business and put your own twist to it? Because, you know, I talk about all the time, you don't want to compare yourself to somebody else. You don't want to do exactly what somebody else is doing. You can copy the how, but you can't copy the why, right? right? So you've got to have your own why you got to have your own purpose and you've got to have your own um, expectations out of whatever it is that you're doing, but you can always take something that somebody else has implemented and, and implement that into your business and put your own twist to it or your own caveat to it. Um, and then, you know, Quentin started telling us about his connection that you actually knew down in Houston. Yep. And, you know, we're looking, we've, we've built a strong following through, through Facebook and I really am, am new to utilizing social media in my business over just the last nine to 12 months or so. It hadn't been something that I've been doing for very long and we're slowly growing, but as quickly as we can. And, um, you know, Quentin's got a huge following on Instagram and that's kind of the new, um, social media that is probably one of the better platforms for entrepreneurs, right? Now. Very visual based. It's it is. It's pictures and it's videos. Yeah. And so it's, and it's, straight it's either forward, an image or a video. That's it. It's to the point. It, and it makes it a little bit harder uh, to just share, 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 which yeah. you see a lot of on Facebook is a lot of sharing. Exactly. It's a lot more your own content, content based, yeah. it, which is awesome for especially what we do. Exactly. And I haven't really used Instagram, don't know how to use it and sit down and in 30 minutes, you know, Quentin was going through it. Like I got lost real quick, but he he's like, you know, he he's like, know right. And he's like, you know, here's a connection that I have. This guy did this, 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 and this for me. He set up this and this. And I was like, well, dude, you're already talking over my head. And he's like, don't worry about it. I'm going to, I'm going to connect you right. guys, you know, and, and, and you can go through and, and have him, you can critique it to your way and, and, and utilize whatever it is that you want to do with it. And he can build that out for you, for your Instagram. And so that was something that like phenomenal value immediately. Yeah. And I know nothing about Instagram and that's something that we wanted to be focused on. So what was the first thing we do when we left? We called the guy up, yeah. right? And and said, hey, when can we set up a meeting? When can we implement this right now? Right. Because if you wait 24 hours, if you wait, you know, overnight or whatever it is, like the likelihood of that happening just gets more slim and more slim and more slim. So we utilized a relationship. We communicated. We communicated, you know, what it is that each of us are currently doing, what we're wanting to get out of our businesses and really collaborated to see how how we could work together. How can these two businesses come together? How can we create opportunity for each other? And then as we did, we realized that there was relationships that each other had that um, could also be utilized and leveraged out. And, and we immediately acted upon those. 
So, I mean, you know, that was one. It's of really the exciting, things. honestly. Yeah. It's and, exciting. And for me, too, you know, with, um, with, with speaking to Quentin, he's got a very similar mindset to, to, to myself and a lot of really, really successful entrepreneurs. And it's really, it's an open hand mindset, you know, like I, we, we want to give back. We want to share. Now you can't, you don't want, you don't, you don't give away the golden hen and not get compensated for it. Right. Like there's a golden ticket that you sometimes offer people and, and you get compensation for that, but you can always collaborate and work together and see how there is, um, that you guys can work together. And so like with, with Quentin, he, he, he told us this story. It was an example of, of a story that he had about a corn farmer that I thought was just a phenomenal yeah, it's fire. way about, about going about business. And so many people um, are so selfish in business that I've found. And, and that is something that will prevent you from growing. And so I'm, I'm going to try not to butcher this story because it's one that he's obviously utilized a lot, but you know, it goes, it, it goes like this. There's a corn farmer that every year um, submits his corn in a, um, in a contest. And every year, year after year, he had won this contest over and over. And I think it was like five years running, he had won the contest. And so finally, one of the, uh, the contest sponsors came to him and, and wanted to interview him and figure out what he was doing to his crop that was so much better in creating such a better product than his competition. And he said, well, I'm not doing anything different. And the interviewer was like, well, you've got to be doing something different. You've won every year. <laughs> you win every you're year. Doing, you're doing something different. And he said, well, really, I'm not. I'm just working with all of the farmers around me. Right. I'm giving and they them don't the come. seeds. Yeah. And they don't come to this event. And so what he said is, I give every farmer, all of my neighbors, my seeds. And, and the interviewer was just dumbfounded. Like, why would you do that? Why would you give, you should be giving your neighbors inferior seeds, not superior seeds. And he said, no, 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 you don't get it. I, I give them superior seeds and, and that's how I do. I have an open hand policy. Like I, I share my, my seeds with my neighbors and they're like, well, why would you do that? And he said, so, so what you don't understand is that cross pollination happens within a within a within an area so if i gave all of my neighbors inferior seeds and i planted a different seed it doesn't matter the cross pollination is going to mix and we're all going to end up with an inferior product yeah. together and so instead i provide them my superior product so everybody around me has a superior product so even with cross pollination we still have a superior product and then i take my product to this contest and then when you compare and that product to the competition it is exactly. way at a higher level and so, um, and I forget the word that he uses, but the, 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 the success of, of one is generated by the success of all, right? Yeah. It's created through the success of all. So when you work together, you create and build success much larger and much stronger than what you would have ever imagined. Right. So it goes back to like, you know, um, individual versus team and, you know, a, a person can run really fast for a short period of time but they give out at some point. So when you're doing something together, when you, when you do something as a team, when you do something as a group, when you collaborate as a group, you can take everybody's individual strengths right. and compile them to one and be, become a much stronger body. And so it's like, you know, we've talked about, you talked about the blues this year. I'm not a hockey fan, but you talk about the blues and how they play together. And it's that cohesive. It was a cohesive. Because we talk, the Boston Bruins have way more like, they had players, individual talent, right. but that individual talent didn't come together and play as right. a team. When they did, the, the couple of times that they did, they obliterated they did. the Blues. But they did not continually play together as a team throughout the whole tournament. They didn't. So, you know, that was just something that just through a random meeting yesterday that really stuck with me on how, you know, we in, in business have to build bridges, not burn bridges. And there's been a number of instances just over the last year, as we've grown in success and continue to grow in success, that there's people that, you know, you have that target on your back and there's certain people that become jealous of whatever it is that you're doing because they compare yourself themselves to you instead of stay in their lane and focus on whatever it is that they're good at and then see how they can, you know, work together. And so, you know, there's been a few people that have burned a bridge between themselves and any opportunities of doing business with us in the future because they were not willing to stay in their lane and see how we could work together. They right. wanted to, 
they wanted to chase that target on our back. And like, I'm not going to do that. Whether somebody's more successful than me or, um, you know, they're more successful in their own lane or whether they are successful in what they're doing. Maybe they don't have the same type of business as I do or whatever it is. There's always a way that you can work together if you stay open minded and that person has the same end goals in mind. Right. And so I think that's, you know, really phenomenal with with Quentin, with his with his event. He's got a, you know, a great following and a strong event um, that he's getting ready for. And for us to come in and be able to offer some of the, the opportunities that we have, um, you know, with building a brand and building out um, a, a, a branch of your company that makes it much easier to raise capital and, and to do deals, then um, I definitely want to bring that opportunity and that value to his, his client base and see how we can work together. Well, absolutely. And I mean, he's such like a calm and composed dude. He is. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm way more of like a, like a jumpy, mm -hmm. you know, kind of cat, but uh, that's a good balance to be around people like that. It is. That, that aura brings another level of uh, mind, fullness to your to anybody's style he's and, got a great vibe and authenticity like oh, yeah. you can tell he is he is very confident in what he's doing and he is focused 100 percent on the the lane of real estate that he's in right very different than than our lane of real estate like i mean he straight up said you know i'm a i'm a terrible landlord right and and there's systems and processes that we've put in place because if it were up to me at the end of the day like i would be a terrible landlord um we've created systems and processes and those are going to be some opportunities that he's going to be able to benefit from from our side because he does have a portfolio of rental properties that he needs to figure out a solution for right, right. and so we can bring that bring that to him but he has been phenomenal at at finding the off market deals and he has been really good at building out a systematized wholesaling company that is running like a machine yeah, he's hands down hard. like a machine he he's is hard. and and he's built a phenomenal team around him i mean you could tell that his his office while we were in his office they really operated in within their lane each person knew what it was that they were responsible at doing and they were focused 100 percent on being efficient at whatever it is that they were doing well, and team morale too like yeah. everyone was in great spirits like everyone was having fun yeah um staying busy coming in saying hey but then getting busy i mean it was right it was a productive workspace, yeah. but you know, very, very similar to ours in productivity, but very different in what it is that they're doing, right? right. And 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 we have a set, a set got goal a different and a game set plan. game plan right. in mind, right? And we execute that. And when we try to compare ourselves to somebody else's company, Quentin is very successful in his own lane. We're successful in our own lane. So there's no reason to compare each other because we run two different lanes and focus estate, on our right? strengths and, and so together. that's with that's with everybody. It doesn't matter if you if you're focused on multifamily and that's all you want to do or if you're focused on long term buy and holds single family or if you're doing owner finance or if you're doing wholesale. We talked about there's this so virtual many wholesale thing. Which there is. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's so many different things that you can be in a lane of. And if you'll focus on making that the best that it can possibly be, then branching out from there, like then you don't lose opportunities. Right. Then you don't burn bridges because I know I am confident in what it is that we do as a business because we've created a business plan around our whys, our desires, our expectations, and what our purpose is. Right. So we built a business plan around that. And Quentin has obviously done the same thing, albeit very different than ours and a different approach. So with those two approaches, we can come together and, and collaborate. And that's been the same way with, you know, with you, um, you know, you, you're not in, you were not involved really in real estate when, when we met, you were involved with other real estate investors. Right. And there's, you know, obviously talent that you bring in that I did not have a social media presence. I obviously cannot run a podcast by myself. I don't even know how to set the camera up. Like I, that's not my expertise. And that's where you come in and you bring value to us with that. We bring value to, to you by offering you a, a full fledged media company here right. that, that supports you. And we're building that and growing that and offering you a physical location to do that. Furthermore, offering you the opportunity to get into real estate right. and something that will create more passive wealth for you 
as opposed to the active wealth that you do through all of your media and social media. Right. Because it's like very that. hands on. I always got to be on the exactly. phone and doing the computer and the microphone. Okay. There's a lot of things going on. At yeah. Once. Well, like like yesterday, you know, yeah. it's we had my executive assistant drive us so that I was working on some real estate deals and some other relationships that we well, were I was teaching on you how to use out. Instagram. And then you were in the back seat, like running Instagram stories for us saying like, look, here's what you do. This is all you got to do. It's right here. And, and you were on your phone the whole time building that out and, right. and doing that as I was building out. Like, I mean, I think I did 25 emails or something in the car yesterday and then um, ran through a couple of properties, some due diligence on some big portfolios and stuff. And we were able to be efficient in what we were doing because we've leveraged out whatever it is we we leveraged out so i guess we're having some technical difficulties no sound coming in i hear it so yeah so anyways i think we're back sorry we had an update from the office come in saying they weren't getting sound but you guys don't have sound just comment tell us um but anyways yeah so we we leveraged out what it was that we needed to leverage out at a cost that was affordable to us and so i know that at what I pay my executive assistant, it's more optimal for him to be driving so that I can work on what it is that I need to work on in my lane. You could work on what it is that you need to well, work yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, I was lane, on the phone we were with efficient. Uh, my buddy Chad from Six Brothers. He's on a vacation right now, but like, you know, he's interested in doing what well, I did the beef commercial for exactly. him. Exactly. And it's like everybody at the office is talking about the beef commercial. Yeah. And like so this is cool stuff. He's going like, to come in and be a sponsor. This on is the super page cool and... for, for him to be able to, we can do that every month. Yeah. And Those I think we get got bigger what, like and bigger six, and bigger. Six sponsors, five or six sponsors that are lined yeah, up. Yeah, I'm still making commercials ads, for this stuff. And we've got to so build busy. up commercials. Exactly. Yeah. And it's like, man, that's so cool that like, People at his office are singing that. That makes me feel so good because, again, I just posted something this morning about Walt Disney got turned down like 302 times building out Disneyland. Yeah. 302 people told him told his him no. theme park was trash. Yeah. And then finally he started he started buying property in another entity in another person's name until he had accumulated oh, enough. That. Yeah. So very, See, very interesting you know ideas. I yeah. yeah. I mean, so it's a, funny. it's a, it was a huge real estate play as well. And so he was buying out property in other people's names and in other entities because he was buying at such a fast rate. And so somebody knew eventually something was up. Why would the same person be buying all this property? Right. And so then they would start jacking up the prices. And so he was using different entities to buy it all until he controlled all the land that he needed to control. Then it was much easier to pitch that idea once he had all the land. There interesting. Better. Yeah. So I, I thought it was very interesting that post that you made this morning. But yeah, that is it goes back to relationships. He had and he created relationships and partnerships that the reason he was able to do that in other people's names and other entities was because he went out and built those relationships, didn't burn bridges, and he made sure that the people that came in and partnered with him on the land were compensated for what they did and they had, you know, they had they had value in what it was that they brought to the table. Um, it allowed him to keep the cost down on the land that he was buying and acquiring at such a fast pace. And so, you know, there was ways to create partnerships that would make it beneficial to everybody involved. And it's super cool, too, because, I mean, there's they just speaking to him, they just released this Galaxy's Edge expansion. And it's this big Star Wars world in Walt Disney yeah. land in California. And yeah. It's like it's a big deal. Even people that I know that aren't Star Wars people walked in there and they were like, <laughs> whoa like i literally felt like i was in the movie and i think that magic that visionary spirit is is the spirit of the entrepreneur it is it is you know we were talking about that a lot he's still serving people's imaginations and he's not even on the planet anymore. yeah because you know as a as a visionary for your business and and you know the person that should create the you know if you're if you're the owner of the business you're the ceo of your business um, you know, you should be creating experiences for your clients, for right. your team, for everybody around. And, and that's something that you should never use if you, or lose if you continue to practice it. It's like, you know, um, contact sports players, basketball, football, baseball to an extent. Like you've got athleticism for so long and then you can't utilize it anymore, right? right. Your, body, your body wears out. Golfers, on the other hand, can go a lot longer. You know, it is still a physical sport, um, very uh, a very mentally demanding sport as well right um but then with entrepreneurism like as long as you're utilizing your mind 
and continuing to build on the knowledge base that you have and expanding your vision and things like that, you constantly have visionary ideas. And so we met with, you know, another um, another partner and client later on in the afternoon yesterday that was just a completely random meeting that we weren't expecting to have. And sitting down with her, we realized that, you know, she's got some very, she's got some great ideas. Like I just from talking to her in a short little period, I realized she had some really good ideas. She had a good basis around her business. She knew what it was that she was wanting to accomplish. She just had not built the team around her and did not have the guidance in place did not have the the GPS in place that I talk about all the time that was going to keep her focused on what it is that she needed to be focused on to build her business out and really systematize her business so then she could start focusing on those other visionary ideas right. that she has and you know that's been fortunately for 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 me I I've, I've found those coaches I went out and um, this was something that we talked about with with Quentin that you know it doesn't matter what it is in your business whether it's a coach whether it is uh, a marketing person, whether it's a chief operating executive, whatever it is in your business, if you hire discount, you get discount. If you pay for the best, you get the best, right? And so there's certain things that you can pay a VA in the Philippines at a discount and get what you need. Typically, it's very transactional work. So transactional work, you can get a discount. But when you need transformational work, when you need high level work, or you need very specific output, you need, high level you need to bring the best. You yeah. need to bring in the best, right? And so, you know, fortunately for us, that's what's helped me to figure out exactly what is my lane in our business and stay focused on that because I have the best partners around me that have systematized our business to where each of us focus on our lane, get in our lane, and become optimally efficient in our lane. We built a team out around that, you know, as we bring in team mem members, we, what is it that we're hiring them for? And then we bring in the best that we can at that area. Same thing with a coach. And so with meeting with her yesterday, I realized real quickly that she had just not had some of the right steps in place. She doesn't have that GPS really built out for her so that she knows this is what I need to focus on. This is what I can expect for the responsibilities of this person, this person, this person, right. this person. And she was at the end of the day, like she met us after doing some stuff that really she should not have to be doing in her business. Yeah, she was covered in pain. Yeah, and so if she's you're, a workhorse, she is. That's why I'm a huge fan of her. And that's good. That 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 tells me that you know she's willing to do whatever it takes. That's why I was like, dude, we should totally meet her before we roll out of town. Absolutely. I thought we were just gonna grab coffee and yeah. roll. But we she's absolutely to do whatever it is that it whatever she's willing to do whatever it takes to be successful. Yep. And that's good. We just need to kind of hone that so that she's doing stuff that brings the most value to her company. And then she's able to find the talent to do those things that she probably doesn't need to be doing at the end of the day. Right. Right. And so, you know, that's just because we were open to, to opportunities. We changed the schedule up just a little bit. Like, you know, we expected to be home at a certain time. We didn't leave until that time. Right. And then we met somebody ended up having a two hour meeting awesome. that was a phenomenal opportunity because we didn't want to burn a bridge. We wanted to build a bridge, right? Right. Build out opportunity. And that's something that um, we're going to be able to work together with her, you know, moving forward. There's going to be, you know, opportunities as we go forward there. And I mean, she's phenomenal talent, um, just needs the right structure in place. Yeah. Yep. Very well respected in the real estate space. I yeah. So, too. you know, I go back, you go back to that corn story, you know, and, and what we, we learned and in, in talking with Quentin yesterday and just highly advise, you know, if, if you get to the point to where you're having to fix a relationship, then somebody or something has communication has gone wrong in that relationship. You've got to keep an open line of communication of what your expectations are of each other, what your expectations are of, of your business, of any partnership or whatever it is that you're doing together don't leave assumption for any situation. You cannot leave anything out for assumption. And this is something, you know, um, had a long discussion with my wife, argument with my wife about this this week. You know, it's like there's there's certain things that I communicate well and there's certain things that I communicate terribly. And, you know, at the end of the day, when you're not focused on bringing communication to every relationship that you have, um, whether that's with a spouse, whether that's with a friend, whether that's with business partners, it doesn't matter. Then you're leaving things up for assumption. And when you leave things up for assumption, 
Kara brought up a phenomenal point to me that, you know, each individual that is either communicating or not communicating is seeing the whole the whole situation transpire through their own lens. And when you're looking through your own lens and you're not looking through the lens of the other person or seeing what it is that the other person expects, and you're just assuming if there's no communication and there's assumptions, then things go wrong because I'm looking at a situation one way, somebody else is looking at it another way. We're assuming both of us are on the same page when we're not. And when both of our expected results don't happen the way we expect them to, then we get mad and we collide, right? And that burns bridge. So you've got to have communication. And it's not, you know, having communications of your expectations is not confrontational. It becomes confrontational when you don't have clear communications of your expectations in the beginning. You wait and leave those up for chance and then communicate your expectations later on. That's when bridges get burned. Um, because you leave things open to assumption. So, you know, if you take anything away from this uh, today, I hope it's the communication factor that in every relationship that you have, you've got to have open communications of your expectations. Communicate what you expect all of the end situations to be. Communicate where it is that you're expecting to go and continue to build on those communications as you go there together creating opportunities for each other, for partnerships, for whatever it is that you're doing. So with that said, we've got a drawing to do. Let's do it. Let's do it. Got to be live to win. So if you guys aren't live, you already lost. I will admit there is one name that I left out of here. And that was... Me? No, that was not you. It was Karis. Because I need to get her an iPad anyways, regardless. Oh, so well, Kara, you win a free iPad. So this our first one For today. my wife to win, because I figured it would be one thing that happened. Let's see. Let's see now. <laughs> okay. Justine Segura wins an iPad. <laughs> Fantastic. So we've got an iPad that is going to Justine. And I think she actually shared more than one time. So phenomenal. Um, so there we go. Uh, we got Justine, Justine why don't you hop iPad. on and give us a little comment there. Yeah, give us a comment. Live on the feed. We will make that happen. Give us a little, give <laughs> us a little live comment there. Tell the people who you are. Fantastic. All right, guys. We shall see you next week, 1030 next Tuesday. Yeah, 1030. And um, yeah, also I wanted to make a quick relay here before we go offline that we are live on Spotify and iTunes and all major podcast platforms. So if you guys want to listen to the replays in your cars, Here's there she is. Communications right here. Somebody that is watching our um, live podcast today just texted me and said he's got a package, uh, a multifamily and a single family package that wants to discuss with us. See, there you go. Closing deals live on the air. Fantastic. I love it. So Justine's there. She's the winner. She has commented here live and confirmed that she is online. So we got a winner there. Oh, Kara's excited too. (laughs) Kara's excited. So uh, yeah, guys, please, if you're on Spotify and especially the Apple podcast app, if you guys could go on there, give us a little Five star high five there on the Apple Podcast app that helps us get noticed on the uh, algorithms of the online world. Um, there's a, like I said, there's a lot of factors to our success online. One of them is being consistent and putting content out there, and the other one is getting everybody to go and bombard that content with love. So uh, we appreciate you guys. And uh, also, real quick today, I'm going to be filming the first episode of CEO Talk with the CEO, Boone Lassiter, and that'll be Fantastic. debuting on the Key City Capital page. So make sure to go follow the Key City Capital page because we're going to have some fresh content coming to that page weekly as well. And we love you guys. We'll talk to you soon. Fantastic.